We tend to think of memory as something that is deeply personal, something that resides within the head of an individual. We tend to talk about memory as if it was something that we own, of my memories of my friends or school or sports matches and so on. But memory is also something that is fundamentally social, something that we do, something that we experience collectively in groups. Memory is produced or created in the names that we give to roads or to buildings, in the ceremonies of remembrance in which we participate, in the obituaries we read or in the toasts that we share. Memory is produced or created in the films, the novels, the video games that we consume. Once we think about memory in that sense, it becomes clear that memory is not only social, but it's also deeply political, not least because remembering involves choice. Choice about who or what gets remembered, often, of course, powerful men, military victories and so forth. Choice indeed about who does the remembering, who is qualified to speak authoritatively about past events. Choices about how our memories are crafted and shared. Statues, plaques, poppies. And choices, of course, about who or what gets forgotten. Now, for those of us living through COVID-19, this event, this crisis, seems so profoundly significant that it's almost impossible to imagine it won't be remembered somehow and for some time to come. It may or may not be true, but the question of how COVID-19 will be remembered is, I would say, still to be decided. So my challenge to you is to participate in the crafting of our shared memory of this crisis. You might want to do that through a diary or a blog or perhaps through a screenplay, a memorial quilt, a sculpture. You might want to do it on your own or with others. So think creatively and think critically about this because it might be your memory work to which future historians turn many, many years from now.